Good evening. The case of PC David Carrick has shone a searing light upon yet more scarcely believable failings by London's Metropolitan Police, even by the force's now historically low standards. Today, PC Carrick pleaded guilty to 24 rapes and as many other crimes against women, 12 different women, including attempted rape, sexual assault and possessing a gun to cause fear. During his reign of terror, which lasted 18 years, the Metropolitan Police had nine opportunities to stop him and didn't. He used his status as a police officer, an armed police officer, to trick them, control them and silence them. He's also set back trust in the Metropolitan Police, rocked by other scandals. The Commissioner of the Force, Sir Mark Rowley, accepted it had failed and said he needed to be ruthless in rooting out those who corrupt its integrity. As a Metropolitan Police officer, PC David Carrick was supposed to protect people. Instead, he preyed on them. A serial rapist who used his position first to seduce and then to scare his victims into staying silent. In court today, he admitted to a terrifying total of 49 offences, nearly half of them rape charges, prompting the head of the force he worked for to apologise to the women he abused. I recognise that we failed and that I'm sorry, and that I know we've let, um, we've let women down. I have tens of thousands of great men and women who really care about policing London, but it's also very obvious I have hundreds of people who shouldn't be here, and we haven't been tough enough about dealing with that. PC Carrick worked as an armed officer in the Parliamentary and Diplomatic Protection Command. During almost two decades of service, he abused that position to gain his victims' trust. PC David Carrick repeatedly humiliated his victims, locking women in the understairs cupboard of his Hertfordshire home or forcing them to clean the house naked. He referred to women as his slaves, telling them when they could sleep and eat, and in some cases, urinating on them. But his crimes went undetected by the force he worked for, despite his behaviour being brought to its attention no fewer than nine times. In 2000, Carrick was accused of burglary and sending abusive messages. Despite this, he passed the vetting procedure to join the Metropolitan Police the next year. Whilst serving, he was accused of harassment and assault in 2002 and a domestic incident in 2004. Despite several more allegations against him, none of which led to criminal prosecutions, Carrick was successfully re-vetted in 2017. In July 2021, after being arrested on suspicion of rape, he was placed on restricted duties. But two months later, those restrictions were lifted after the charges were dropped. It was only in October 2021 that he was finally suspended from the Met after another accusation of rape by a woman he'd met on a dating app. This is a man who relentlessly degraded, belittled, sexually assaulted and raped women. As time went on, the severity of his offending intensified as he became emboldened, thinking he would get away with it. And for 18 years, he did. This appalling incident represents a breach of trust. Uh, will it, it will affect uh, people's confidence in the police. And it's clear that standards and culture need to change. PC David Carrick's crimes have had a devastating impact on the lives of 12 women. His police force's failure to detect them has destroyed the trust of millions more. Chloe Keady, News at 10. And our UK editor, Paul, uh, is with me. I mean, it is really hard to overstate how grave this is. This goes to the heart of the questions about policing by consent. It goes beyond the Met and, as you know, beyond policing too. Yeah, I mean, David Carrick was a predator dressed as a protector of women, but his uniform really oughtn't have provided much of a disguise. I mean, the number of missed opportunities here to stop his behaviour can only point to abject failure by the Metropolitan Police. We're talking about opportunities in 2001, 2002, 2004, 2009, 2016, 2017, 2019 and 2021. And on that last occasion, the Met was in the middle of professing that it was going to stop this kind of behaviour just as it was continuing to harbour a rapist within its ranks. Today, the Metropolitan Police Commissioner says that there may be a thousand Met staff who are potentially posing a danger to the public. But as you say, it doesn't just 
dwell within the ranks of the Metropolitan Police. I think this is now appearing to be a cultural issue across what I would deem, or you might deem, the hero services, the fire and the police services. We reported last month, for example, on South Wales Fire and Rescue Service, which is facing an independent review of its culture because of the behaviour towards women that we uncovered there. There seems to be this issue of a macho culture in the fire and the police service, of an antiquated culture, of a power dynamic that allows them to abuse vulnerable people uh, that they are supposed to help to protect. Other institutions, other sectors have had their kind of wake-up moment, whether it's the church or whether it's the media. I think that is what the police and the fire service are now going through. And if they don't reform, they really are facing a crisis of trust. Indeed, OK. In this day and age, qualified immunity remains one of the deadliest threats to US citizens. There is no doubt, and as witnessed daily, that as long as police officers in our uncivilized nation are encouraged to murder without consequences, we can expect no improvements to our life expectancy. According to the United States National Academy of Sciences, and I quote, police in the United States kill far more people than do police in other advanced industrial democracies. To date, Colorado, New Mexico, and New York have repealed qualified immunity, and we remain hopeful that in the near future, serial killers with badges will be held accountable for the unreasonable execution of citizens. Furthermore, the Academy of Sciences additionally says, journalists have stepped into this void and initiated a series of systematic efforts to track police-involved killings. And I bid to you, my fellow citizens, that this rampage of certified murders must be stopped for the safety of our children, handicapped, and veterans. Please support the new Institute for Justice and their Americans Against Qualified Immunity campaign. Check them out at www.aaqi.com. You'll also find them on Facebook and Twitter. That's Americans Against Qualified Immunity. That's all for now, my brothers and sisters. Stay safe and always film the police.